Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's uh, June the 26th and we're looking at Psalm 4. Now, <clears throat> Psalm 4 is a Psalm of David. That's what it says at the beginning of the Psalm and these uh, notes at the head of a Psalm are part of Scripture and they should never be separated from the text. So this is a psalm of David, and he speaks about conflict between the seeds. Let's read on. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me, and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing Selah? But know, and this is my password, verse 3. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call. So he says, stand in awe and sin not. And consume with and commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. You see, <clears throat> what David is doing, he's describing the life, the godly life, of a man in the old covenant. He says, <clears throat> Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. It's not the righteousness of God that a Christian has by faith. This is the righteousness that David has as he lives faithfully before the Lord his God under the law, under the old covenant. He says the Lord hath set apart those that are godly for himself and the Lord will hear them when they call. So he says, because of that, stand in awe and sin not. Now to stand in awe and sin not is the very height of Old Testament experience of God. <clears throat> Standing in awe is the very essence of the fear of the Lord. He says commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. He says offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in in the Lord. You see, God is not so much interested, he says, in the sacrifice of animals. God doesn't want you so much to offer a sacrifice and be restored. He would much rather that you didn't sin in the first place. He would much rather that you were standing in the fear of the Lord and that you didn't sin. That's what he would prefer you to do. So offer to God the sacrifice of righteousness. Offer a life that is lived in the fear of the Lord and is lived according to the commandments of the Lord. He says, and put your trust in the Lord. Now he says, there may be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that the corn and wine increased. I will lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, O Lord, only makest me to dwell in safety. So what is he saying? He's saying there is a joy. There is a joy in this old covenant. And it's the joy of worshipping the Lord and living a life before him in holiness under the law offering a life of holy righteousness to the Lord and that brings a gladness into my heart which is greater than the gladness of a harvest he says and I will lay down to sleep and I will have peace because the Lord causes me to dwell in safety you see, the enemy cannot come into the land. My life cannot be a threat while I am righteous before the Lord my God. Okay, so let's look at Psalm 5. Now, Psalm 5 we call the perfect man in the middle of his enemies. And this again is a psalm of David. He says, give ear to my words, O Lord, consider 
my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King, my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice thou shalt hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. <laughs> Notice he looks up. I don't know where we get this idea of shutting our eyes when we pray. In the Bible, when men prayed, they looked heavenward and they lifted up their hands to heaven as well. For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Now we need to mark this. People think that the very essence of um, godliness is love. Well, that's just one side of the coin. We love those that do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord. But we hate all workers of iniquity. There are people that try to mix this up and say, well, we hate people's sin, but we love the people. Well, no, that isn't quite right. The Lord hates all workers of iniquity. We are to emulate him. Those that do exceeding wickedness, we are to hate them. Now, that doesn't mean to say that we want to hurt them. <laughs> it means that we do not love them. That's the point. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. As for me, I will come into thy house in the multitudes of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship towards thy holy temple. You see, David had a, a real sense of the fear of God. He was afraid of God. And that fear of God put a break upon sin in his life. There was no Holy Spirit to um, help him in this. He had the Holy Spirit to enable him to be king and to do the work of the Lord. But <clears throat> he, the fear of the Lord was his guide and it restrained him. Um, he says, lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make my way straight before my face. What David is saying is, Lord, I want to live a life that is righteous before you under the law uh, and because of my enemies. You see, if I don't lead, lead a life that is righteous, then my enemies will come and destroy me. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth and their inward part is very wicked. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Got that? Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favour wilt thou compass him as with a shield. And so here we have life under the old covenant. We must not slip <laughs> into the false idea that they're Christians. There's no Christians at this time. These are people bound. They're in the bondage of the law. They live their life in the fear of God. And their life is very simple. If they do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord, then God will bless them. But no matter how much they've done that's right, if they do that which is wicked, then God will judge them. And so he says, all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them also that love thy name be joyful. Why? For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favour. Wilt thou compass him as with a shield? And so in the old covenant, whether it's the covenant of Moses, as in this case, or whether it's in the covenant of Noah, if they do that which is right, 
then God blesses them. <clears throat> now it's our six. We call this the perfect man chastened. And uh, this again is a psalm of David. He says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chase me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. Now, in the Old Covenant, if a man did something in which he just got away from the Lord his God, the Lord sent um, chastening into his body. The Lord made him sick. And the purpose of this um, chastening was to humble him and to bring him back to the fear of the Lord, to cause him to think again. Now, this concept of thinking again is the concept of repentance. And repentance might occur every day of the life of a man under the law. He says, my soul is so vexed. Now, the soul is the physical life of a man, physical life. But thou, O Lord, how long return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. Why? For in death is no remembrance of me. And in the grave, who will give thee thanks? He says, Lord, if I die, I can't carry on giving you thanks then. If my body is laid in the grave, my body won't remember you then. So he's not referring to the fact that beyond the grave, there is um, a life, a life in God. He's talking about just the physical human life. He says, I am weary with my groaning. All night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. Mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. For the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and so vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. So, so David is living in this very unique position. He's under law. He lives in the fear of the Lord. He lives in this constant strain upon his soul. He knows that he's living righteously. He longs that he might live righteously according to the law. And in that, God will bless him. But he's also surrounded by enemies who would love to get hold of him. And if they can get hold of him for two minutes, his life wouldn't be worth tuppence. And on top of that, God is disciplining David and disciplining through his body. And David pleads with the Lord. He says, don't let me die, because when I dare, when I die, I won't be able to remember you then. My body will have no memory then. I'll not be able to give thanks to you then. And so this is David under the old covenant. Well, God bless you. Look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.